I was raised a little differently. I was raised to fight weakness. I was raised to fight pain. I was raised to fight depression. Not to give into it. Not to cave into it and cry like a little baby in bed. Boo-hoo-hoo. Boo-hoo-hoo. And you need men like me to save the country. You need men to stand up and say, stop crying like a baby over everything. Stand up already. Michael Savage is back in the headlines. This time he's trying to promote his latest crazy book. Joining me to discuss the dangers of Savage's new book is author David Nywert. David, uh, my 19-year-old would look at Michael Savage and in the 19-year-old phraseology would say, Michael, you are truly a horrible person. I would add to that a disgusting psycho. But go ahead and tell me the story. Th- this, is, this is an unbelievable story. He's got a new book out that's actually selling, and yep. it's in all the bookstores. It, it's amazing. Yeah, I normally try not to pay too much attention to Michael Savage because he is one of the more despicable um, radio talkers out there. And, and, you know, it's he's on there daily spewing garbage. But he has a book now that's called uh, uh, Stop the Coming Civil War that, that is – it's on actually like number eight on the New York Times bestseller list this week. And it's been on the New York Times bestseller list for two or three weeks now. And it's doing very well on Amazon. So he's selling a gazillion copies of this thing. And and the thing that's disturbing about it is that, you know, it's supposed to be this thing about how we're going to prevent people from engaging in a civil war. But what it really is about is fomenting civil war. It's about getting people so paranoid and angry and worked up that, of course, they have nothing, uh, no recourse but insurrection. You know. So okay, so let, go down the list, David. I mean, you you know this list by heart about what kind of the old standby crazy uh, moon, you know, the teabagger conspiracy theories. That's basically what this book is about, isn't it? It's just a bunch of string string together some conspiracy theories and then call for a revolution. Yeah, I, well, he goes through. I, actually, he what he's mostly been uh, uh, selling in his book is a bunch of fairly new conspiracy theories, but it's, you know, everything ranging from Benghazi to um, the president's supposed um, uh, plans to round us up into concentration camps. Um, <laughs> did, did he add that we were going to use the UN, guns, so- of course. UN soldiers were going to help with that, I'm sure. Yeah. That's always part of that. That's part of that. Okay, so so he picks up with he picks up with some old ideas and comes in with some new, and and what is he what is he saying about uh, how how it is that we're going to 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 get government out of our backyard and if we get government out of our backyard then maybe we can avert a revolution that's that's kind of where he's going with this isn't it well he doesn't actually offer any any kind of cons- solutions like that what he's actually doing is, is the whole thesis of the book is that Obama plans to inflict a uh, civil war upon us he's he's going to push Americans so far and so hard that they'll have no choice but to revolt and uh, it's all you know do you think Americans are going to stand for this do you think Americans are going to stand for that kind of stuff and you know essentially he's arguing that Obama is going to try to impose a dictatorship and Americans are going to have no choice but to rise up in insurrection. Um, but and he, his solution for stopping the Civil War is uh, to elect as many Tea Party members as possible and, and get the country turned into the direction of the Tea Party. Okay, now, just to put this in perspective, I, I did a couple of stories a, a week or so ago talking about his statement that all the people, the, the soldiers that actually went out and fought for, uh, uh, you know, in Iraq and Afghanistan, that the ones that came back with PS, with, with, well, with post-traumatic stress disorder, that they were crybabies. And he, he goes on his show and he says, gee, if I had been involved, I'm a real man. And I don't, of course, by the way, he's never served. This is a guy, Michael Weiner. That's his name. Now, this is a guy who's had the hell beat out of him his entire childhood, and he wakes up, and, and all of a sudden, it's this psychotic notion of, I'm going to change my name to Savage, and I'm going to be a new person. But he's also the same guy that said, you know, we can, what, what was it? There was 900 million, uh, I think, uh, 
I don't know the exact numbers, but he goes and talks about the idea, let's kill off about 100,000 Muslims, and then we only have 900 thousand more to worry about. Uh, I don't know if you remember that quote. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he says, I mean, look, a lot of these guys, a lot of these radio talkers, and you know, I've written about this for years, they're always pushing the envelope, always trying to top each other in terms of being outrageous, because that's how they pump up their radio ratings. And, and you know, I get that part of it. But what it does, of course, is it just incredibly pollutes our discourse. And it's also had the effect of dragging the whole political discourse so far to the right that it's almost, uh, you know, right-wing conservatism is just almost unrecognizable anymore. Well, actually, it's quite recognizable. What what these Tea Party folks resemble uh, anymore is exactly what we saw at the, in the militia movement in the 1990s. You go to a Tea Party gathering, and it's really indistinguishable from these militia gatherings that I used to go to in the 1990s. And, and that's where these guys are going. Well, this is this is where Clive and Bundy types come from, right. isn't it? This, this is where you have, um, this is where this is where you have the the real nut jobs that go as far as putting a gun in their hand and going out and saying, well, you know, I listened to Michael Savage, I read his book, you know, he must be right. So let me go kill a few liberals. Let me go kill a few government folks. Let me fly my airplane into into a government building. Let me break into uh, break into a government building and kill an innocent security guard. Th this is the way that all of this manifests itself. And I don't have any doubt that this is what Michael Savage wants. I mean, I, I really have zero doubt that in his mind, that's a good day for him. What's your take? Well, I, you know, I don't know if he goes there. Um, what I think he does is he goes to his ratings and he looks at his ratings every day and he looks at how much money he can make off this. I, I think he's really a, a crass opportunist. And, and, and yeah, you, when you put the that sort of behavior that he engages in up against, you know, the, some of the things that he says, like what he said about our soldiers and, and who have... Uh, PTSD and called them a bunch of crybabies. I mean, you know, this is somebody, he's just beneath contempt in a lot of ways. And yet people are still buying his books. They still, they still buy into it. And well, tell me about that. How, how is it, how is it that people can't look and see the hatred and the ugliness of this guy? How is it they can't see that uh, he's just dripping with hatred and that that's what he wants America to become? Why, why is it they say, well, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to go buy his book because this is somebody I agree with. Is that where is that where we're yeah. headed in this country? Yeah, I, I think sad to say that uh, a lot of the people who are buying his books are people who agree with him, who who want to think that, who, uh, look, there's just so the, I, I think people really do underestimate the depths of cultural animus that people on the extreme right harbor towards the rest of us, how deeply and profoundly they really hate us. Uh, you have to go out into some of these rural areas sometimes and, and, and talk to people just kind of on a one-to-one -one basis. And, and you've done that, by the way. Let me just tell you, you've written about this for years, and, and, and that experience has told you what? Going out and actually, you know, being in the coffee shop, sitting in the bar, wherever it is, and, and listening to what they have to say. What's your gut reaction to all that? Going to a gun range is, is uh, uh, anymore kind of a frightening experience for me because, um, you know, I grew up in a gun-using household, and and uh, my dad was a gunsmith. And anymore, I I just walk out of, when I go to a gun range to, to shoot, it's scary because the everybody there hates liberals so much, and they hate Obama so much. I mean, they all want to kill Obama, seriously, <laughs> at least a lot of them do. And they harbor fantasies about killing him. But, and that's what ultimately Savage's book is about. It's about beating and stoking those fires of hatred and, and insurrection. And I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm actually very concerned um, now that the election is over because I think that They've been saying, these folks have been saying for some time that if President Obama actually takes a step uh, on immigration and, and takes his executive action on immigration, that they're going to go to the pick up arms. Yeah. They're going to go yeah. to the White House with weapons. Yeah. And, and, and of course, they threaten all kinds of stuff all the time, and usually it turns out to be a, a giant fizzle. But 
I don't know that we shouldn't take them ser somewhat seriously. Well, either. David, you've been around. You have made this. Uh, <laughs> You're, you've made this your mission to understand them for the last decade. And I, I, you are the go-to person on trying to understand what in the hell is going through their minds. It, it's pretty spooky stuff. I know. I, I'm glad you read the book so I don't have to. <laughs> David Nywert, thank you for joining me, okay? You bet. Thank you, Mike. David Nywert is the author of the book, And Hell Followed With Her.